Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a science fiction drama film, Finch. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. Many years in the future, a rare solar flare destroys almost the entire atmosphere, causing the Earth's surface to rise in temperature, and most people to die either of severe weather or cancer. Our protagonist, Finch, used to work as a robotics engineer before the disaster. With the help of a spacesuit like heat shield, Finch is able to walk in the daytime in search of supplies in temperatures approaching 70 degrees. He and the machine dog Dewey scour the city's buildings. Finch finds a bottle of wine and a can of dog food. The quest ends without a hitch, and Finch gets behind the wheel of the heavy RV, and sets off for the next target. Having lost the atmosphere, the water surface of the earth is almost baked dry, and the city has already become a desert. When Finch checks the map, there is a mass of rapidly approaching sandstorms. Immediately, he has to turn around and sail towards the shelter. Fortunately, Finch ducks into the sluice gate just in time for the dust storm. Thanks to its sturdy construction and well-equipped supply system, he survives the disaster for a long time. Finch gives himself and Dewey a brief rinse before he goes to his pet dog Goodyear. In this deep underground cozy little home, Goodyear dog is Finch's only living buddy. Finch hugs Goodyear while it brushes against his face. An obedient and faithful pet, Goodyear would not eat or move unless told so. Although Finch is hungry, he does not open any canned food for himself. After some careful considerations, he selects a number of books to scan into a computer, and loads them into the robot's drive. This newly invented robot needs a pair of eyes and a short name, Robot. Due to the shortage of supply, Finch has transferred Dewey's eyes to Robot. Finch is now about to start his first test to see if the robot can work properly. As a flood of data is introduced, the robot starts to react weakly. When Finch asks Robot a question, it takes a long while to give a reply. Even so, Finch is really happy about the progress. Sometime later, Robot is able to speak a full sentence like, a giraffe can survive longer without water than a camel. Finch teases Goodyear that it would not know this. Apart from the three principles of Robotic, Finch makes one more command for Robot. When Finch is not around, Robot must protect Goodyear. Robot asks Finch when he will disappear. Just when Finch cannot think of a proper answer, there comes a blackout. Finch goes out of the hole to repair the wires. Moments later, electricity is resumed. But dark clouds, lightning, and thunder roll all point to an impending disaster. Finch returns to his work desk, and checks the weather forecast. True enough, there will be a superstorm arriving at his location within 24 hours, and it will last for 40 days. As a way to relieve his stress, Finch opens a can of yellow peach and stuffs it in. He makes up his mind to leave his paradise in Street Louis, and heads to San Francisco in the west. With some luck, they might come across a place not yet rated. By this point in time, it is revealed that Finch is also suffering from a terminal illness, due to his long exposure to radiation. That is why he is determined to make a reliable robot companion for Goodyear before he dies. As his nose bleeds and blood drips to the floor, Finch knows that there is not much left for him. Finch teaches Robot how to walk, Robot picks it up like a little kid. Step by step, Robot learns fast and walks slowly. Finch smiles at his masterpiece when Robot is walking towards him. Goodyear barks at Robot as usual. Robot is hit by an obstacle, and falls right back. Gradually, Robot is able to walk steadily and even run. Finch does not forget to repair Dewey. He makes the surveillance camera as Dewey's eye. All set, Finch, Goodyear, Dewey, and Robot start their journey of relocation. Robot is obviously not familiar with the RV, and continues to amuse Finch with his silly mistakes. They travel across a desolate landscape with surging sandstorms. There are no living things outside. Even human beings are nearly driven to the brink of extinction. Robot jumps around, and scans everything he can find. Finch's photo of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, makes him rather excited. Finch introduces that it is mailed from his uncle. Soon, they are going to replenish their supplies. Finch briefs Robot that they should not miss any chance to get food. And then, Finch puts on his protective gear, and alights the RV with Robot. Along the way, Finch explains to Robot that the atmosphere is destroyed during the solar flare, and many holes are left. They stop at a cinema. Finch cannot crack the lock, but Robot tears down the whole door. While searching, Finch finds a bag of corn. He splashes some of that on the iron plate, and they become popcorn instantly. Unfortunately, their joy is short-lived. Soon after, Finch finds that a hurricane is approaching them. At once, Finch and Robot get back to the RV, and drive away. However, they cannot escape the range of the hurricane. Finch pulls over at an open space, and secures the RV to the ground with spikes and winches. 
Even though Finch works non-stop, time is running out, and he might be blown away by the tornado anytime. In a pinch, Robot volunteers to finish the task alone. He tightens the winches with all his strength and might before the hurricane sweeps him away. The wind snaps the rope one by one, tossing the RV violently. Finch cannot stand firm at all, when Robot hangs himself to the ceiling. The items drop and fly in the cabin, as if taking a roller coaster ride. Thanks to the last rope fixed by Robot, they survive the disaster. After the hurricane subsides, Finch goes for a check, and spots that a tire is cracked. Robot finds a spare tire, but there is no jack. Finch feels rather depressed. To his surprise, Robot easily lifts up the RV with just one hand, and thumbs up with another hand. Overjoyed, Finch replaces the tire. He realizes it is time to give Robot a human name. He suggests Jack, the Jack under the car, Robot says no. He brings up other ideas, but Robot does not like it. In the end, Robot names himself Jeff. Pleased with Jeff's performance, Finch shakes hands with him. The next day, Finch coughs and spits blood. Jeff volunteers to take over the driving duty. Finch gives it a miss. He stops the RV before a restaurant to get some rest. Unexpectedly, Jeff does not sit still in the vehicle. He peeks at Finch and finds him not paying attention to the RV. Happy-go-lucky Jeff then takes the driver's seat and navigates the car, imitating Finch's actions. Seconds later, he crashes into another car. The loud bang alerts Finch, and he dashes out without hesitation. He orders Jeff to give him the protective gear. Jeff jumps down the RV, as if he realizes his own fault. However, the next moment he returns to the car, and begins to back the RV. This time, he knocks the car against another obstacle. Without any choice, Finch stretches out his hand under the sun to do a demonstration. The scorching sun rays and UV rays immediately burn his hand. In frustration, Finch lectures Jeff that he is created to take care of Goodyear, not to bring them more troubles. Jeff lowers his head when Finch reprimands him. He is a little upset that Finch does not acknowledge his efforts. Back to RV, Finch reflects upon himself, and realizes that he is too harsh on Jeff. To make up for his mistake, he begins to teach Jeff driving. Jeff proves himself as a fast learner, and very soon gets hold of the skills. That night, they are able to see auroras without the ozone layer. Jeff asks Finch why they do not travel at night, but risk their lives under the scorching sun. Finch answers that dust, heat, and UV rays are predictable. But after sunset, they have to deal with sinister mankind prowling around like roaring lions. What Finch says is certainly beyond Jeff's understanding. The next morning, Finch pukes without stopping. It is clear that his health deteriorates drastically. Instead of sitting beside Jeff, Finch has to rest on his bed. Jeff takes the role of driving and wonders what more he could do. Finch tells him to call a doctor. Jeff knows it is only a black joke. He then covers Finch's forehead with a wet towel and silently goes back to the driver's seat. While Finch is asleep, Jeff stops outside a hospital, aiming to find some supplies with Dewey. This is by far the first mission carried out by the two robots, with Jeff taking the lead. Strangely enough, the main gate is not shut. Jeff does not pay attention to this detail, and charge into the hospital directly. Jeff has found some medicine and a jacket. He put the coat on, and looks even cooler. Dewey discovers a donut, and reaches out its hands for it. Little does it expect that the trap is triggered, and its mechanical arm is crushed into pieces. When Finch arrives, Dewey's arm is already destroyed, and the remaining part shakes as if it is in great pain. Finch feels apologetic towards Dewey's misfortune, and turns it off with tears, at another part of the hospital, Jeff gladly uncovers a cabinet that contains a rich resource of supplies. He tries to pack as many as possible. Finch finds Jeff and orders him to retreat. At this point in time, they hear some movements from upstairs. Finch and Jeff flee to RV and start it immediately. As expected, the owner gives a chase. Finch explains that the place is definitely a trap, and Dewey is sacrificed due to Jeff's silly judgment. He emphasizes that they cannot afford to make mistakes again. The car which tails them has not given up. Late into the night, it is still behind the RV. Finch instructs Jeff to turn off the lights, stamp down on the accelerator, and force a left turn. This way, the car is supposed to enter a tunnel. But the trailer is too tall, and the sun visor on the roof is broken and stuck in the middle. The captor's car also follows their direction. Jeff alights and pushes the vehicle into the tunnel. Finally, the sun visor is all crushed, and the car gets in. Finch watches everything in anxiety, and relieves when the captors give up on them. But they now have new trouble. It is impossible to survive without the sun visor. Finch feels that they are doomed. Jeff encourages him not to worry. 
but Finch vents all frustration and anger on him. Back to RV, Jeff says that he firmly believes in Finch bringing them to the Golden Gate Bridge. Finch is rather emotional upon hearing Jeff's words. He then shares a story with Jeff. Long long ago, the solar flare broke out. Scrambling and looting have become the daily norm. One day, Finch found a packet of noodles in the supermarket. Before he left, he saw a mother and a daughter pushing a cart full of groceries. The daughter was not older than nine years old. But she safeguarded their groceries like a soldier with a gun in her hand. The mother told her to aim at anyone who posed as a threat. So Finch hid in a corner and waited for a chance to go after them. Brandishing a shotgun, an assailant forced the mother and daughter to hand over the shopping cart. The girl cried out loud in fear. Seconds later, the mother and daughter were both killed. After the scoundrels left, Finch came out to find a dog shivering in the daughter's bag. That is how Finch adopted Goodyear. Looking back, Finch comments that hunger turns men into murderers, but turns him into a coward. Finch denies himself as a trustworthy man. Comes morning, Finch is not able to get up from his bed. Jeff alone navigates RV, and accidentally finds the postcard of Golden Gate Bridge is sent by Finch's father. His father initiated a meetup when he dropped by San Francisco next year. The sender signed off as dad, not uncle. Just when Jeff wonders what happened between Finch and his dad, a butterfly bumps into the window shield. The sole existence of the butterfly indicates that the ozone layer at this location is not depleted. Jeff alerts Finch. This discovery strengthens Finch so much that he is even to walk down RV to take a look. For such a long time, Finch finally gets to enjoy the sunshine. Flowers on the field and butterflies flying around prove that UV rays are not an issue. Finch staggers to see the flower, cherishing the precious moments towards the end of his life. He changes into his handsome white suit and takes the best meal together with Jeff. Although the background setting is a desert, it feels like they are having a vacation on the beach. Jeff mentions that he had a dream of them visiting the Golden Gate Bridge together. Finch finds it particularly interesting that a robot also dreams. Jeff takes the opportunity to ask Finch about the postcard. From there, Finch unravels the story of his father. It turns out that Finch's dad was enlisted by the military before his birth. He had never seen his dad or heard of him until the postcard was sent to him when Finch turned 15 years old. He regarded it as a treasure and prepared a white suit for the meeting. However, there was no more update. Finch wanted to tour around the world, but he procrastinated from time to time. So in the end, he had only been to New York once. It would be a wonderful experience to stand on the Golden Gate Bridge Finch regrets that he has not spent his time wisely. Now that even if he will, he cannot make it to the Golden Gate Bridge. Finch speaks with Jeff as if they are good friends. There was a time for him to marvel at Jeff's learning ability, and a time for him to bark at his silly mistakes. But now, it is time for him to make Jeff his legacy and even a descendant, to take care of his inheritance. Finch always enjoys playing a ball game with Goodyear. Now he needs to train Jeff how to do it when he is gone. Jeff and Goodyear have fun playing together, but Goodyear always passes the ball back to Finch. Jeff is a little disappointed. But soon after, Finch cough up blood and stains his white suit red. Jeff rushes over to take care of Finch and asks what he can help with. Finch is really touched by his concern. He holds Jeff's hand and acknowledges his contributions. Jeff lays his head on Finch's shoulder and Finch gently embraces him. Patting on Jeff, Finch's eyes are filled with tears how much he wants to visit the Golden Gate Bridge with him. That night, Finch lies on his bed, stroking on Goodyear. He soon falls into a deep sleep, and never wakes up again. Jeff attends to his affairs, and officially takes over his duty of caring for Goodyear. He opens a can to feed Goodyear. Goodyear also accepts Jeff's companion. He brings the ball to Jeff before and after the toss. Jeff decides to take Goodyear to the Golden Gate Bridge. Gradually, Goodyear warms up to Jeff, and even runs into his arms. On the journey, Goodyear takes the passenger seat beside Jeff. At last, Jeff places Finch's tomb beside the bridge. He also draws Finch, Goodyear, and himself on the postcard, and pastes it on the bridge. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.